Hi everyone, I'm Matteo Dulce from Quantil and I'm going to present the work Serving Fluid Embeddings to Analyze Homicide Occurrence Patterns in Bogota, Colombia at the Second International Conference on Computing and Data Science. So, analyzing homicide data is of a special interest to law enforcement agencies, but it's especially a challenging task due to the low frequency and spatial sparsity of these events. For example, in Bogota, there are about 1,100 homicides per year, compared to the more than 100,000 robberies that are occurring in the city in the same time period. With this in mind, in this work, we use several inflated exponential family embeddings to analyze the spatial patterns of homicide occurrences in Bogota, Colombia and found useful insights about the different types of quadrantes that are some spatial units used by the police to plan their patrol routines through intuitive mapping of high, medium, and low homicide rate quadrantes into our embedding space. In their later literature, we found, firstly, a crime prediction models literature, as the one proposed by Mollet et al. based on self-exciting point process, or the work proposed by Jean et al. based on deep learning methodologies, but these models rely heavily on large data sets to predict criminal events. And as I mentioned, homicides are infrequent events, and fitting and training these um, kind of models for specifically predicting homicides is a challenging task. On the other hand, we found that the embedding method have proven useful in identifying similar criminal dynamics in a spatial and temporal units, as the works by Xu et al., Wang et al., and Yang et al. Then, in this work, we aim to use embedding methods to understand criminal dynamics of homicide occurrences in Bogota, Colombia, for some specific spatial and temporal units. In detail, we focus our analysis in 1,051 police jurisdictions called cuadrantes. These are some spatial uh, units in the city made up by 10 or 15 blocks that are used by the police to plan their patrolling routines. Furthermore, we divide the week in six police patrol shifts used by the police between morning, afternoon, and night shifts and differentiating between weekends and weekdays. With this spatial and temporal unit, we construct our data sets, where each observation is a homicide count for each quadrante in a specific police shift in a specific week of our training period. And constructing this matrix over the entire period for which data is av available from 2013 to 2019, this results in a very sparse matrix with less than 0.4% of non zero entries, showing again the low frequency and spatial sparsity of this data. These, for example, are the homicide occurring in one specific week of 2019, in December of 2019, and in the morning shift uh, on the weekdays, we saw just three homicide events, in the afternoon shift of that same week, we found four homicide events. And in the night shift of that week, weekdays of that week, uh, there were six homicide events. These are compared to the more than 2,000 robberies that occur on average in a week in Bogota. So this, again, is to show the low frequency and spatial sparsity of the, of the homicides. And also, there is no obvious temporal or uh, spatial concentration of this data, the quadrantes where these events occur in this week change from the morning to the afternoon to the night shifts of the police. This uh, gray area is Bogota, and the white lines are the division of these quadrantes, and you can see that, it, that they vary greatly in size, uh, with rural quadrantes being larger than quadrantes at uh, downtown and some important areas of the city. So, with this in mind, we use a, pro a methodology proposed by Liu and Blay of 2017 called Exponential Family Embeddings that aim to learn vector representation of some items. The items in our case are the spatial regions, each quadrant of the city, each one of these uh, quadrantes, we have 1,051 quadrantes in the city, and we aim to learn an embedding vector rho sub j and a context vector alpha j in some k-dimensional embedding space. And for this purpose, we use observation context page. So the methodology needs three ingredients, the context, the conditional distribution, and the embedding structure. First, the conditional distribution of xi for observation xi, given its context yi, belongs to the exponential family, and we use as natural parameter eta, that uh, according to the context, use a link function f, um, that for each observation, use the embedding vector that we aim to learn, raw sub si, 
uh, the context vector y and the context uh, the context observation and the context vector that we also aim to learn alpha j and this conditional probability of the exponent of the observation given its context captures the interaction between the observed values that are again the counts of each quadrant in a specific time period and the context and we use as context the count for all of the other quadrants in the city over the same period. Again, the observation is the count in a specific quadrant in a specific time period, and the context for that observation is the count over all the other quadrants in the city over the same time period. But again, we have that the zero valued observation dominate our data set, so we need that the embeddings to focus on the non zero observations. And we make this by modeling the probability of being exposed to this context. Okay, so for each observation xij, we define a Bernoulli random variable bij with rate uij that is constructed through a logistic regression using a vector of exposure covariance. Attributes of our observation that lead us to compute the probability of being exposed to the context, and then we sample random uh, random samples of our Bernoulli variable, and if Bij is equal to zero, then the observation xij will be equal to delta zero and distribution concentrated at zero. And otherwise, if Bij equals one, then the observation xij is the this distribution of the exponential family with uh, natural parameter eta according to the context and sufficient statistic t according to the observation. So, uh, our setup. We fit low dimensional embeddings for each of the 1051 quadrantes in the city where homicide occurred for 2018 and 2019. We use Poisson and negative binomial as an exponential families since we are dealing with count data, and we use lots of plus as the link function. The exposure covariates we use to model this probability of being exposed to the context are temporal covariates, such as an indicator for holiday, an indicator for weekend. The patrol shift we are uh, seeing the observation and the month of the observation. We fit the embeddings using 80% of the data between 2018 and 2019 and test the resulting embeddings on the remaining 20% of the data that corresponds to the most recent observation, the last 10 weeks of, of 2018. To fit the model, we, maxim we maximize the log likelihood of the observation given their context, the sum of the log of the, log of the conditional probabilities of xi given yi, and we maximize this using gradient descent, using AD gref and during training, we hold out 10% of the training data used for validation of convergent purpose. Okay, so the results show that the best model that leads the better results is the Poisson certain fluid embeddings, certain fluid embeddings using Poisson model <coughs> and using as context the counts of the other quadrants in the city and the temporal exposure covariance I mentioned. This model has the best performance among other different specifications of conditional distribution, for example, negative binomial, or not using the seriflated component, other definition of the context, for example, local context, just using the near quadrantes, and other exposure covariates using other attributes for the quadrantes to model this exposure probability. And also, you can notice that barring the dimension of the embeddings from 8 or 16 or 32 doesn't seem to give an improvement in the log likelihood of the test set of the model. Again, uh, using the seriflated component leads to a significant improvement of the models from the baseline of the exponential family embeddings. And using temporal covariates improves the model, especially uh, to model better those quadrants with a positive count in the test period. And this is of special interest. We are more interested in understanding how the quadrants where homicide occurred behaves rather than the whole quadrants of the city. So with this in mind, we the following analysis will focus on the embeddings resulting for this model using Poisson or inflated uh, um, distribution, the context of the city of the other quadrants in the city, and the temporal exposure covariates that I mentioned an indicator for holiday, an indicator for the month, an indicator for the weekend, an indicator for the patrol sheet. So the results, to analyze the results, to analyze the, the resulting embeddings of our methodology, we first uh, regress the exposure probability, the probability of being exposed to the context that 
is modeled through this exposure covariance against the total homicide count of each quadrant in our training period. And we found a significant correlation between these two quantities, suggesting that the, that the probability of being exposed to the context is actually capturing the total homicide count, and it's actually the resulting embeddings have this information being used to map each quadrant to the embedding space. Moreover, we use principal component analysis to investigate the resulting embeddings. And something that is worth mentioning is that the first principal component explains 70% of the variance in the embeddings in the eight dimensional embedding space. And the second principal component explains 7% of the variance. So these two principal components explain more than 75%, three quarters of the variance of the resulting embeddings in our eight dimensional space. The plot in the left shows the the, each quadrant, each one in this point in this scatter plot is a quadrant uh, plotted in, in its two principal component analysis, in principal components. And we see, for instance, that quadrants with low homicide count that are in yellow uh, tend to cluster more to the right, to the, to the left, and quadrants with a higher homicide rate tends to cluster in the right part of the plot. So this means that the first principal component is capturing a lot of the variance. And also when we made the regression of the first co principal component and the total homicide count, we again found a significant correlation between these two quantities, suggesting that quadrantes where homicides occur more often cluster together in our resulting embedding space. Okay, so the embeddings are actually capturing this total homicide count, not just of the quadrantes, and also of the context of each quadrant. To, to see this more in more detail, we used different dimensionality reduction techniques and different clustering approaches to construct cluster of the embeds. So, so to see if we can construct, uh, if we can found like quadrantes that have similar embedding structure in the embedding space and cluster them together. We found that actually three clusters were the, the most um, optimal number of, of clusters to, to use in this analysis, uh, for different approaches, we use k-means, UMAP, UMAP, and PCA for the dimensionality reduction, and k-means and spectral clustering for, for the clustering of the embeddings. And we can see that we, we got in the UMAP uh, <clears throat> a point cloud of quadrantes with low homicide rates, and other and point cloud with quadrantes with high and medium homicide rates, and that we can cluster them together in three groups of quadrantes with high homicide rate, medium homicide rate, and low homicide rate. This again giving us the intuitive result that we are seeing in our embedding space, uh, quadrantes with similar structure, with similar count rate, being clustered together. So we then use a multi-classification logic to see how, if a quadrante belongs to a specific cluster of low, medium, or high homicide count can be related or can be explained by some socioeconomic, socio-demographic attributes of each quadrant. And we made this by fitting a multi-classification logistic regression and using chat values for different variables of the C. And we found that is really interesting that quadrantes with neighborhoods with low income of a stratum two or stratum one has a positive relation of belonging to a quadrant with a cluster with a higher homicide rate. Also, we found that having a lot of, or the count of business establishments and pedrastian bridges also is positively correlated to belonging quadrante to a cluster with higher homicide rate. On the other hand, we see that, for example, uh, having a medium to high neighborhoods of a stratum four or stratum five have a negative relationship with being of a higher clustering so that quadrantes with, with neighborhoods with higher income belongs in general or are associated with quadrantes in clusters with lower homicide counts. Finally, even though this spatial covariance explained part of this clustering assignment, there, these are static features that do not change over time. In contrast to homicides and crime dynamics that are, are, are dynamic, it's a dynamic phenomenon, and therefore, we expect both the embeddings and the clustering segment to vary over time. Yeah, the, the same quadrant can be in a cluster in one period, but being another cluster in another period. But this can't be explained just by the spatial attributes we used before, because these are static in time. 
So we uh, made again the embeddings using different trading periods and different testing periods. And we saw that the overall structure of the embeddings and the cluster assignment remain mostly equal, but the cluster assignments do not remain static. For example, so we trade the embeddings using 2017 and 2018 data and, and see the, the clusters and the assignments in the first week of 2019. And we see again the, these structure of one point cloud of quadrantes in low homicide rate and another point cloud with medium and high homicide rate and these three cluster clusters forming together uh, in this two-dimensional U of space. And we have this quadrant that belongs to this low homicide count cluster. Again, for the week 17 of 2018, training using the two previous years of data. And we see that we have similar spatial structure of the embedding space and the clustering that we are uh, obtaining for, from this methodology. And the quadrant remains in the low rate cluster. But then when we see the week 33 of 2018 and the week 49, the embedding structure remained the same. We have, again, like these clouds and these uh, three clusters, but this quadrant moves from the low rate cluster to the high rate cluster. And something important to notice is that the total homicide count of this quadrant didn't change over time, but the context and other quadrants that are similar to this quadrant do change over time. So this suggests that we can obtain um, temporal covariates to explain the, the homicide dynamics of the quadrants that can be useful to predict future homicide occurrences in the sea. So conclusions to recapitulate. We use zero-inflated models, and these zero-inflated models lead to significant performance against uh, non-inflated models to the exponential family embeddings in a traditional way. And the embeddings obtained generally have a similar structure and intuitively map the location, the quadrantes, along a dimension according to their total homicide count in their first principal component. Quadrants are divided into three clusters, which correspond, mostly speaking, to those with high, medium, and low homicide rate, and they show expected correlation with social demographic attributes. The embeddings remain generally stable over time. The embedding structure remains generally stable, but they are not completely steady, suggesting that we can found temporal attributes of the quadrantes that can uh, explain that these dynamics, how they change in their homicide rate. Finally, the serial inflated embeddings model captures relevant patterns from historic homicide data, and we therefore expect, as our future work, to be able to use this information to improve the predictive capabilities of other homicide prediction models. Thank you. Um, I'm willing to answer any question and enjoy the rest of the conference.